Hello and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Our Mountains and today we're going to talk about multiplayer in the top-down engine. So the engine comes ready for local multiplayer support, a potentially infinite number of players and a four players example, Grasslands, that you are looking at right now. Um, this demo is complete with victory conditions and two different camera modes. So you have these uh, four, four player split screen setup, but also a group set up like this. Um, note that this could certainly be used for network based multiplayer, but due to the many different combinations and possible gameplay styles that the engine accommodates for, um, this is not something I've decided to include in the engine. Know that it's doable. So once you've installed the asset in the demo folder, uh, you'll find the Grasslands demo. I think it was introduced in version 1.3 of the engine. So if you are on a version that is below that, you want to make sure that you update to 1.3 or more. Um, and in the Grasslands demo, uh, you'll find stuff that you would usually find in um, single player demo or, or level really. Uh, so you find your regular game manager, sound manager, background music, uh, and the manager. The level manager is the one that changes. Uh, in this case, it's a Grasslands multiplayer level manager. And on this manager, you and we'll get back to the details of it quite soon, but uh, on it, you can define a camera mode so it can be split or group. And this is going to pilot really uh, different camera rigs. So we have the group camera rig and the split cameras rig. Uh, both of them are very standard stuff. Uh, in the case of the split camera, these are four different virtual cameras, um, all linked to regular Unity cameras. So these are Cinemachine powered. And the group camera is one Cinemachine camera that also has um, a group target. And that group target will try to, so it's a Cinemachine feature really, and it is going to try to always point at the center position between all the players. So the only real difference between a single player level and a multiplayer level is going to be our level manager. As you can see, this one has four different prefabs. So it's going to sp uh, spawn a red, blue, green, and yellow characters. Um, it's going to auto attribute player IDs. We'll get back to that. And we've got multiplayer spawn points here. Uh, and if we click on them, you'll see that they are uh, respectively here, 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 and there. And we also control all camera modes. We also have a dedicated Grasslands multiplayer UI uh, that also has separate countdowns. So we have one per UI. Uh, we have one for the group version of the cameras, and we've got one for the split version of the cameras as well uh, because they're just in in different positions but that the same that's really the same logic and if we open that script uh, we can see that uh, it extends multiplayer level manager and if i open that class you see that it extends level manager so we have level manager that is really for uh, your single player mode uh, multiplayer level manager will add a bunch of features to that, such as uh, the fact that it handles different camera modes, so uh, group or split. It also spawns multiple characters instead of just one. And it handles stuff when the player dies. And um, you have this virtual method here that you are supposed to extend in your own multiplayer level manager. And the Grasslands is a perfect example of that. Let's have a look at what this class does. So uh, at the start of it, you have an explanation. Um, it is really an example of how you can extend the multiplayer level manager to have your rules. So uh, the multiplayer level manager would be the base logic. Uh, we need cameras, we need to spawn characters. Okay, but what are the rules? And this will be specific, of course, to your game. Uh, hard to make a generic version of that, but you can use that one as an example. In this case, uh, the rules for the game are quite simple. Any player can grab coins. One coin means one point. After a certain number of seconds, I think it's 60 by default. No, it's actually 99. After 99 seconds, uh, the game stops and whoever got the most coins wins. If all players but one are dead, 
the game is gonna stop and whoever got the most coins will win and at the end of the game a winner screen is displayed and tapping jump anywhere will restart the game and the following code basically does just that so we can go over it in in details here we have our point counters for all our characters uh, we have our two countdowns that we want to update uh, at any time we have the game duration that can be of course defined from the inspector right here somewhere game duration so in this case it's 60 then uh, we have a bunch of stuff like uh, the, the string to display for uh, the winner ID and so we initialize our stuff when a player dies uh, we are gonna go and have a look at how many players are still alive and if our number of players that are still alive is uh, equal to one or inferior to one we're gonna start a game over coroutine and this game over coroutine is gonna display uh, it's gonna stop the time more or less and display a game of a uh, at least it triggers a game over event and that game over event is then caught by the GUI manager that displays the, the winner screen. On update, uh, we make sure we update our countdown. So uh, that is the uh, amount of seconds that are left. We also check for game over. So uh, if we are in the game over state, if anybody press the jump button, presses the jump button, uh, we are gonna reload the scene basically. So start a new game. And every time we grab a pickable item event, uh, we, so anytime a coin is picked because that's the only thing that can get picked into that, uh, into that scene. Uh, we look at who picked what so uh, we from the pick event we get the picker and uh, we check if there's a character on it and if there's a character we grab its player ID and we increase the points for that person really and then we ask the UI to repaint the the UI so we refresh really the, the amount of points on screen and of course on enable and on disable we register to listen to these events uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the MM event system, uh, there's a dedicated tutorial and documentation for it. I encourage you to have a look at it. The last thing you should know about multiplayer is how to create characters for it. So um, if we go into our playable characters folder here, you see that we have four of them. Uh, they look like this. It's not very easy to see, but uh, maybe if I drop them in the scene, you'll be able to see. So uh, we have our horns blue, and as you can see, it's very irregular uh, character, but the only difference is that, whoa, the only difference is that in the player ID, where you usually would put player one, we have player two, uh, while horns green is player three. Uh, you can also leave that to player one if you want to use these characters somewhere else. And uh, in this case, you'll want to make sure that in player prefabs, actually below player prefabs, you want to make sure you have auto attribute player IDs checked. And in this case, player one will be the first item in your array. Play, uh, player two would be this one, this one, and so on. So one, two, three, four, I think. Um, and the requirement for that, of course, is to have as many input managers as you have characters. So uh, if you look at our Grasslands UI camera, we have an input manager here for player one, an input manager for player four, an input manager for player three, and an input manager for player two. So that's four input managers. Each of them is responsible for catching the inputs of its respective player and uh, acting on it. And all that in turn uh, impacts the axis or is gonna use the axes that are defined here. As you can see, there are quite a lot of them. Uh, by default, the engine comes with support for four players, but let's say you want to create a game with eight players uh, and you have tons of game pads and stuff like that. Um, what you want to do is basically duplicate all the axes you're gonna use, uh, let's say like so. And this one would become player five horizontal and on this you would go joystick 5 in this case let's say you want to go for joysticks 
uh, and then you duplicate player four vertical and you say joystick five and so on and so on for all of these axes that you want to use and of course uh, on the UI camera itself you want to probably uh, copy that component paste that component as new in this case you would say player ID is now player 5 and go on with that and basically that's it that's uh, the only difference and the only things to know about creating a multiplayer game in the top-down engine I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video bye